guys, it's me Sonia here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're back with another x Lotal video. So Toby is just taking the spotlight, aren't you Toby? We're back with another x Lotal video today. Uh, I wanted to talk about something. Now, before you comment, please watch the video, okay? I can explain the title, okay? Just wait a little bit. I promise you, I love x Lotals and I don't find them boring. However, they're not for a lot of people and I think, honestly, most people might find them boring and mainly I'm talking about this now because I've noticed that the start of this year I've been seeing so many people rehoming their axolotls that they just got their kids for Christmas and the kids now bored so they want to rehome it and get something else like one of the posts uh, that I saw said oh my kids are bored of this axolotl now I want to rehome him and get them some fish instead and it's like and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with having to rehome an animal. Because, you know, stuff happens in life, you just gotta do what you think is right sometimes. And sometimes the right thing to do is to rehome your animal. I don't think there's any shame in that. However, I do find it a little bit upsetting when I see people rehome an animal because they're bored of it or because their kid is bored of it. And they've only had it for like less than a month. I do find that a little bit sad. But I am glad they are rehoming it instead of just keeping a pet that they don't even like. But I did want to kind of talk about that a little bit because I noticed it quite a lot this year. And I'm sure this happens every year, like a lot of parents get their kids pets for Christmas which I don't really agree with unless the parent is like fully responsible for the animal but it's definitely happening more commonly with axolotls now mainly because axolotls are pretty popular right now uh, kids really like them because of like Minecraft and stuff which I don't think is a bad thing that kids like them and nothing wrong with kids being interested in animals I think it's really cool but I do think that maybe some people uh, don't really realize what axolotls are actually like and don't really do enough research beforehand which I think is just the most important thing. Maybe one day I should make a whole video about like gifting pets to people or kids because that's a whole nother conversation but specifically today we're just talking about axolotls um, and I think like if your kid is showing interest in axolotls and really wants one I'm not a parent so maybe I'm not worthy of giving parental advice but I did drop out of a childcare course so <laughs> I'm well, I'm not joking. I did do that, but obviously I'm not really qualified. But if I have been a child before, believe it or not, so I do have experience in being a child. What I'm saying is, I think that if a child is showing interest in getting an axolotl and they want to get one for Christmas or their birthday or whatever, as a way to know if they are genuinely like willing to take care of one, you should encourage them to do all the research for it. Of course, you would be doing research at the same time, but I think it's a good idea to also encourage them to, and they can tell you what they've learned, while also you knowing if that's like correct or not too. I think that's also important that a parent should be responsible for child's animal. I do think that a lot of kids can actually do super well like caring for animals but it really just depends on your kid and obviously you know your kid. It's really easy these days to find a lot of information on animals. If you want to know more about axolotls I have plenty of care guides on them but there's also plenty of other videos and look on different websites and stuff and there's so much information you can find now and if a kid is genuinely like really interested in owning an axolotl they'll do the research, trust me. Like, I did lots of research on different animals as a kid because I just loved animals, and especially frogs. I did lots of frog research and mainly read a lot of books. That's because I wasn't really allowed to use a computer until I was older. And I didn't even really know you could just, like, Google things and find information on anything. You know, I didn't really know that. But something I feel like we don't talk enough about x Lottles is that they are very cool animals. I love them, of course. I have an x Lottle. I love her. I wouldn't trade her for the world. But, they are kinda boring. Now, I don't actually think that they're boring. I actually love just sitting there and watching Max Little and feeding her, it's super entertaining. But, most of the time, they don't really do anything. They just kinda sit there. Sometimes they'll just sit in the same position like all day, and that's normal. Some days they can have a day where they're like really active. Usually at night they're more active and you can see them swimming around when the lights are off. But most of the time, they don't really do anything. In fact, it's actually kind of abnormal if your axolotl is very overly active all the time. It might mean that you have a water quality issue because they're just kind of lazy animals. They don't really do much. They can barely even eat for themselves. You have to hand feed them most of the time. So although axolotls are such cool and fascinating creatures, they're just, to me, they're just cool to look at even when they don't do anything. To like a lot of kids, I think once kids have them for a bit, they kind of realize they're not really as active as they are in Minecraft. <laughs> they don't swim around catching things and killing monsters. They just kind of sit there and um, 
That's about it. You have to be careful what you even have in the tank. You can't have like small things in the tank, especially can't have gravel because they can choke on it and die because they have really bad eyesight. You also can't house any like fish with them or anything because they could also choke on the fish or the fish can hurt them. You can house multiple axolotls together, but you do have to make sure you have a big enough tank for them because if you don't, they might end up accidentally eating each other's limbs off. But then they grow back, so that's cool. But obviously you don't want your axolotl to be losing limbs, because they still feel pain. I think people also forget that. Just because they can regenerate their limbs doesn't mean they don't feel pain. I can't believe I even have to say that, but unfortunately I do. I just saw a post recently. I follow this rescue page, uh, it's New Zealand Rescue. And just recently, just the other day, they got an axolotl where their previous owner was intentionally cutting off its limbs. Um, and that just disturbed me so much. I just can't believe anyone would ever do that. I don't know if they were a kid and maybe just like, oh, they can regenerate, so I might as well just chop, chop off their limbs. Maybe they saw that YouTube video of you know who, I made a whole video on him, where he basically said throughout the whole video that he's gonna cut off its limbs. He didn't actually do it, but he keeps saying he was gonna do it. The title was cutting off my axles limbs or something like that. A lot of kids will just see that and be like, oh, I can do that, cool. I don't, I don't know like why they did it, but that just really made me upset that people would do that. But thank god that Axol did get rescued. Axols also need to be kept in cold water, so you have to make sure that your water temperature stays under 20 degrees Celsius uh, consistently. You don't want it to get too hot, which can be difficult if you live in a country where it gets too hot. Now personally, I see the cold water thing as a plus because I do live in a cold country, so I don't need to worry about that. But obviously, if you live in a hot country, that's something to worry about. And like I said, they can barely even eat food themselves. You have to hand feed them a lot of the time. Now, sometimes you can like train your axolotl to eat out of a food dish or a bowl, which Toothless, she'll eat bloodworms anywhere in the tank, but nothing else. But bloodworm is just a treat and she won't eat anything else lying around the tank. So I have to hand feed her her earthworms and her hashy grub pie. And that might take a little bit of time. Some axolotls can be like really difficult eaters too. Like I had one axolotl that was like, always just like would take ages to finally eat the food from my tongue. So it does take a bit of time to feed your axolotl every day or every other day. And it's good to feed them a varied diet. A lot of people don't know that either. Some people just might feed them pellets or just might feed them bloodworms. Please don't do that. But the reality is they like a varied diet. Earthworms is definitely one of the best things you can give them. But to constantly have earthworms, you might need to have a worm farm, which is also more work. It's very easy, but it is a bit more work. And then for a passionate grub pie, you have to actually make that and keep it in your fridge and stuff. And some people might think that that's a lot of work for an animal that doesn't really do anything. <laughs> now, I obviously I disagree. I love them. I think they're amazing pets, but I think it's important that people know they might be boring to you, okay? A lot of people find fish boring. You know, like fish, all they do is swim around the tank and that's it. I find them really cool. I love sitting there and just watching them. But a lot of people find them boring. So imagine if those people find out how boring axolotls are. They must find them mind-numbingly boring if they find fish boring. <laughs> I also have seen a lot of people who just got an axolotl for Christmas for their kid and then the axolotl is dying or died or is unwell because they didn't cycle the fish tank, which I'm kind of surprised I've been saying that a lot even in the New Zealand groups because usually pet stores here uh, actually have to tell you to cycle your tank first and ask you about that, but unfortunately some still don't, which is a shame because I do think that pet stores are partially responsible for that. Cycling your tank is just such an important process and it's really sad to see a lot of people don't know about it and then their ex little unfortunately passes away which really sucks and I do feel really bad for them obviously and sometimes you do have to make mistakes to learn those things but then those people who already have an ex little they find out about cycling after they have their ex little and they're like oh god there's too much work I want to rehome it now which is why it's just so important to do a lot of research before you get the animal to see if that really is right for you because they seem like small little things that don't really do anything, but they can be a lot of work, especially if it's your first aquarium and you don't know anything about cycling a fish tank. So if you want to get an axolotl, I have a whole playlist on my channel of axolotl videos if you want to hear more about them. This was just a kind of quick, like, PSA, because I think they're really awesome, uh, I think they are really interesting pets, but they're not for everyone, and that's totally fine too. Thanks so much for watching this video, feel free to check out my other axolotl videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!